In this lecture, we'll be taking a look at how we can create a database in WebSQL. As mentioned, WebSQL makes use of SQLite. So, most of the syntax that you'll see over here will be from SQLite itself. The first thing that we will be doing in this page is on load of the page, we'll be calling a function. Now, that function will first check whether WebSQL is supported or not. And if WebSQL is supported, then it will go ahead and execute a statement which will create a table and database. Now, the first thing that we need to do is create that statement. So, what we'll do is we'll be declaring a variable over here. Let's call it as create SQL, which is going to create a courses table. And here, three columns will be there, ID, course name, and publisher. Now, course name and publisher will be of text data type, whereas the ID will be of integer data type with primary key. Now, as soon as you define a particular column as primary key with integer data type, SQLite by default increments it. So, you don't have to provide the value for ID when you are inserting values in your table. That will be taken care by SQLite itself. So, that's an advantage over here. Now, next thing that we need to do is check whether WebSQL is supported by the browser or not. For that, we'll be creating a function and we'll be calling it as getOpenDatabase. Now, this getOpenDatabase function will actually check for window.OpenDatabase and here we are making use of double exclamation mark which will actually convert this to a boolean value. It's true or false. If it's true, we are returning that object. Otherwise, we are returning undefined. So, that's the function of getOpenDatabase. Once that is done, we'll be actually creating another function which will make use of getOpenDatabase to check whether it's supported or not. And if WebSQL is supported, it will go ahead and execute this statement which we have as createSQL. So, here we have defined another function. We're calling it as prepareDatabase. Now, prepare database is first of all calling get open database, which is then assigned to a variable called open database, ODB for short. Now, if it's not supported, obviously we are saying WebSQL not supported and we are returning from that point. But if it is supported, in that case, we are actually making use of ODB to create the database. Here, we are providing the name of the database as the first parameter. Then, we have the version number and then we have a description for our database and this is the size or the maximum size of the database. So, here we are saying that the maximum size that this database can have will be 10 MB and uh, when it will be created, it will not be created as 10 MB database but it will be having this value as a maximum size. Now, as mentioned in previous lecture, all the operations that we'll be doing on WebSQL will be asynchronous in nature and that is taken care by the word transaction. So, here the value DB that we have now is pointing to the AppSkill database and then we are making use of the transaction and asynchronous and uh, anonymous function over here. So, when we are executing this transaction, we are saying that this is the anonymous function and T here represents the transaction. So, we are saying execute SQL and then we are passing create SQL statement over here. So, T dot execute SQL is actually taking a couple of parameters. First one being the SQL statement itself. The other one is set of parameters that needs to be passed over here. We are not passing any. That's the reason why we have an empty array. Then the third parameter that we have over here in execute SQL is a callback function. Now, this callback function has got two parameters. The first one is for transaction itself. The other one is for the result set. Now, this is going to be called when the execute SQL has executed successfully. But if there is any error, the fourth callback function that we have over here will be executed. Now, here also we have two parameters, T for transaction and E for error. So, you can see that when we are executing it successfully, we are getting this message r.rows affected. So, for that we are making use of results 
and here when there is any error we are saying e dot message finally we are returning this database variable now in the next lecture we'll see how we are going to insert values in our table using this database object now finally I'll be calling this prepare database function inside this window dot onload save this now when I'll run this it should create a table called courses inside a database called skill DB let's go ahead and check it out now so here you can see that we are getting a message saying create table rows affected zero and if I go ahead inside the application tab of this developer console here you'll see web SQL and inside that you'll see the skill DB database and then you'll see the courses table currently the courses table is empty as you can see now in the next lecture we'll see how we can add rows to this particular courses table